The following is a special presentation of WVEC TV, Channel 13. Vietnam. I'm Mike Gooding. It's been more than 25 years now since the official end of the Vietnam War and still to this day more than 2,000 American service personnel remain unaccounted for. Over the next half hour we'll take an in-depth look at what's being done to find them to provide the fullest possible accounting of what really happened and hopefully to bring them home. Rise and shine, rise and shine! If you can't shine, rise yourself up anyway! A new day is dawning in Vietnam, and First Sergeant Mark Newberg makes sure everybody is ready for it. The troops go through their morning rituals, lace up their boots, and prepare to face another day. There's work to do. From 7 a.m. till 4 p.m., Americans side by side with Vietnamese villagers sift through dirt on a mountaintop in for what all the world seems like the middle of nowhere. But this is somewhere all right, for it was here in the Quang Nam province in the central highlands of what used to be South Vietnam that something terrible happened. On July 3, 1966, an Army H-34 Choctaw helicopter crashed, killing all 15 passengers, including three American GIs. Now, 34 years later, they look for the one American who has never been recovered. It's a monumental effort to find one guy, but the people doing the looking say it's well worth it. Because it's the responsibility of the living to talk about the valor of those who died for America. And every time a person's identified and goes back and the family mourns and gets closure in their lives, that story of the valor of a service member fighting for their country and dying for their country and the willingness to die for their country gets retold and it reminds America of just what we're about as a military. And that's sort of collectively why we do it. The team is called Joint Task Force Full Accounting, representatives of all four branches of the armed forces, carrying out orders by the president to achieve the fullest possible accounting of Americans still missing from the Vietnam War. They work alongside counterparts from the U.S. Army Central Identification Laboratory in Hawaii, whose mission is finding unrecovered U.S. service members from all past wars. It's not pretty work. Talk about your mission impossible. Three weeks ago, the Joint Task Force team faced a small battle of their own just getting this base camp habitable. We're nearly a mile high in the sky up the side of this mountain, and the nearest village is a four-day hike away. So remote is the site, the team uses a 60s vintage Soviet-made helicopter to ferry people and supplies. It's a challenge, but one Major Steve Bunch likes. The challenge? Getting the, the scientific team out here. And that, that, uh, that rests on my shoulders. And uh, making sure it's safe and making sure that people are taken care of. Um, you can't attach a price to the value of a soldier's life when he gives it. Uh, in the service of his nation. And uh, there's no greater way to display our um, respect and appreciation for that, that sacrifice by coming out here. Overseeing the hunt, civilian anthropologist Ellen Moore. You can dig for days and weeks and months without finding anything. So when you do find things, it's, uh, it's really rewarding. Uh, these coins, most of these coins... This time they hit the jackpot. Not only do they find coins and a host of personal effects, but teeth and a fragment of a leg bone, which DNA testing should lead to a positive ID. And when the day is done, team members like Sergeant Shane Boucher can look back on their efforts and know they accomplished something important. When you find something, like a, some bone or some teeth, um, you just you get a feeling of, you know, all this is worth it. So it, it, it's great. I love it out here. As a soldier, it, it hits me personally because uh, if it were me, you know, and, I were, and they were looking for me, I would want my family to know uh, how it ended or if it ended or what, you know. So uh, 
It means a lot to me. We feel a, a kinship to those who, who sacrificed during the war and we try to bring back who we can, bring them back home. It's like preparing all year in school, waiting for that last exam and you've, and you've passed with an A. It's got the same gratification, same feeling. Staff Sergeant James Doster isn't about to let some tree stump beat him. It's 100 degrees and nearly 100% humidity, but he keeps on chopping. <laughs> this is the Quang Tri province in the central highlands of Vietnam, south of Highway 9 near the old demilitarized zone. And everybody here, American and Vietnamese, work with a singular purpose to find whatever it is that could be found. Sometimes all the hard work pans out and sometimes it doesn't. They've been on scene here for three weeks searching for the remains of five U.S. Army soldiers who crashed in an airplane back in 1971, thought to be buried somewhere in this crater. So far, they've found nothing, but spirits remain high. Still out here to do a job and uh, sometimes that, that, that happens, you know, sometimes it, you don't come up with anything and uh, all they can do is hope for better next time. It was a freak accident. Nobody even knows if the airplane was shot down or simply suffered some catastrophic mechanical failure. All they do know is, after all these years, there isn't much left. You really didn't find anything like I said. Um, definitely no bone or anything like that. The total amount of wreckage we found in the site, I think, would fit into four or five buckets. I mean, that's how little is left after one of these, these things goes up. Uh, 30 years is a long time. Bone does disappear. Still, they search, day and night, night and day, they look long and hard for some fragment, some shred of evidence of the long missing soldiers. Air Force Master Sergeant William Smith has been with the Joint Task Force for three and a half years. This is his 24th mission to Southeast Asia. So I volunteer and um, I got the assignment. I've been loving it ever since. I think it's one of the best things you've done in the military? Uh, yes, besides joining the military, yes. And as for coming up empty... Is that kind of disappointing? Yes, it is. That's our main objective is to come up with remains. But it isn't to be, and the mystery of what happened here 29 years ago remains. What's changed, though, is the cooperation between the former adversaries. Five years ago, such a joint mission would have been unheard of. Yet there they are, U.S. soldiers and Vietnamese villagers working hand-in-hand -hand to try to get to the truth. This newfound friendship was born in 95 with the normalization of diplomatic relations between the countries. Now, this year, a breakthrough in trade talks. Vietnamese leaders say the closer ties may lead to more breakthroughs in the MIA search. I think so, I think so, because uh, only when uh, both sides have a full normal relationship, we understand each other better. And just maybe they, we, will finally put the Vietnam War behind us once and for all. April 30th, 1975, and the American Embassy in Saigon was being overrun. The war was lost. So were 58,000 American men and women. But it wasn't until 1992, 17 years later, that the search for troops missing in action really took off. The U.S. opened a military compound in Hanoi known as the Ranch, and Joint Task Force Full Accounting was born. It still operates today. The team is diverse, investigators, analysts, anthropologists, and language experts. Some military, some civilian, all with one mission, finding missing Americans alive or dead and bringing them home. American taxpayers are footing the bill for this entire operation, $100 million a year approximately, to find missing U.S. service personnel from all wars of the 20th century. That sounds like a lot of money, but not if you ask Martha Consalvo of Virginia Beach. She'll tell you it's worth every penny. Half a world away, the flame of hope still burns brightly for Martha. She remembers May 7, 1972, just like it was yesterday. It was a strange day. I had a phone call, and I picked up the phone, and there was nobody there. And uh, shortly after that, there, my doorbell rang, 
And I went to the door and there stood two Marine officers and a chaplain. And they told me that they had come to tell me that my son had been shot down the day before, leading a mission over North Vietnam. Marine Corps Captain John Consalvo was returning from a bombing run, flying low just 300 feet, when his F-4 Phantom was struck by anti-aircraft artillery. The blast tore his left wing off. The co-pilot bailed out safely. John was never seen or heard from again. That's where the plane crashed, right there. And this is where the back seater was picked up. Martha still has all the maps and letters related to John's accident, including the telegram she got from the Commandant of the Marine Corps. I deeply regret to confirm that the status of your son, Captain John W. Consalvo, Jr., USMC, has been changed from missing in action to deceased. Through the years, Martha has been a leading voice among MIA families to force action on the long dormant cases. And I do, I get very angry and defensive for all the years that nothing was done. And I keep thinking if only they had done some of this years ago, we'd have had a much better chance. But you can't go what ifing, it doesn't do any good. So the mother keeps praying, keeps hoping against hope that someday her beloved son comes home. My problem is I can't prove my son's alive. But you can't prove to me that he's dead. So that, that has been a struggle for me through the years. And I'm trying my best to find some way. Back in Hanoi, the number two man at the U.S. Embassy doesn't sound exactly encouraging, noting that the easy cases to solve already have been, and that the hard ones, like John's, may never be. We do know in many cases that we will never recover remains because the individuals were lost in a circumstance in which recovery is, is virtually impossible. Dennis Harder salutes the continuing effort to bring about full accounting of the missing, but stops short of saying when it might all end. We will put the close sign up at such time as we have decided we cannot reasonably make further progress. Until then, the digging continues, and the flame of hope burns on. On the sweltering streets of Hanoi, a sea of motorbike riding humanity goes about its business, far removed from the long ago raining down of B-52 bombs. It's like another world now. Communist flags, Ho Chi Minh's mausoleum, a statue of Lenin. But nothing much here to say there was ever a war waged. Half the population is 25 or under, born after the war ended. College student Du Chun is just 21 and speaks for many when he says he knows little of what happened. Sorry, because um, I'm only a youth. Um, I'm born when the war passed, so I, I don't know about the war because I can't talk uh, much about about this. But if you look hard enough, you'll find some traces of the past. There's the infamous Hanoi Hilton, where American pilot prisoners of war were incarcerated, now a tourist attraction costing roughly $3.50 to get in. There's Ho Te Lake, where John McCain got shot down, marked with a simple stone. And most jarring, the wreckage of an American B-52, sitting next to a Coca-Cola stand. A sign reads, Welcome visitors to vestiges of victory over B-52 bombers. And yet, knowledge of what happened in what the locals call the American War, at least among the working class, is limited. This Ciclo driver told me he knew nothing. I, I'm too young, I don't know. Yeah, young man, about 33, you know. 25 years after the official end of the war, 27 years after the U.S. got out, it's pretty obvious why the MIA issue still burns brightly back on the home front in America. But what about Vietnam? What have they got at stake? Plenty. In the impoverished countryside where more than 80% of the people live, they still farm with the tools of many centuries past. Their concern is the here and now with a per capita income of $350 a year, making this one of the poorest nations on earth. Come here, please. Hello, my friend. 
Merchants rely heavily on Western tourist dollars, which have been slow in coming. The trick seems to be figuring out how to be a player in the global marketplace while starting from the economic stone age. And still, there's the MIA issue. I would like you to bear in mind that we have uh, cooperated with the U.S. government uh, to deal with this uh, issue. Nguyen Ba Hung is director of Vietnam's Office for Seeking Missing Persons. The John Hopkins educated Hung says the economy and the MIAs are not related, that Vietnam has a long history of helping old enemies find their war dead. And uh, our government is uh, giving high priority on this program. Hung points out that while the U.S. still has some 2,000 missing personnel, his country has 300,000, and that America has an obligation to help Vietnam find them. And he's adamant that both sides need to be more efficient in their MIA searches. We cannot investigate a case 20 times without any new clue, without any new information, without any new witness, because the more effective ways we handle the issue, the more remains we will bring home, the more pains we can help ease. Once the excavation work in the jungle is over, it's time at long last to load up the plane and send everyone home in the final leg of this healing journey. I think seeing those caskets go home and know that, uh, knowing that there are going to be identif identifications out of that and some families going to get closure. That's, that's the important thing, I think. The Air Force takes over with its C-17s out of McCord Air Force Base in Tacoma, Washington, carrying personnel and precious cargo back home. Once airborne en route from Thailand to Guam and ultimately Hawaii, the pilots say they're glad to do their part. You know, these guys back here are laying the groundwork, the full accounting effort. I'd say it's really important to bring the closure to the families. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of a, a level of dignity that we owe those guys. In Honolulu, the scientists pour over the airplane wreckage and personal effects and, most importantly, try to make DNA matches with whatever human remains the team brought back. You're bringing closure to them, and that really means a lot to me, rather than uh, academics, what I used to do, uh, where I didn't really feel like I was making an impact. The numbers are staggering. It is not just the 2014 American service personnel from the Vietnam War that remain missing at stake. It is also the 120 from the Cold War, the 8,000 plus still missing from the Korean War, and the 78,000 from World War II. And should any of those remains ever be found, they will all pass through here, the Army's Central Identification Laboratory in Hawaii. Anthropologist Greg Berg's team enjoyed huge success in Vietnam, finding numerous remains, the most important of which was an American pilot's denture plate. This type of recovery is, in my mind, what Sohai and, and JTF are all about. It's we're bringing two individuals home, and they will be reburied on U.S. soil, and that's what it's all about to me. It is, says the lab's deputy director, vital that the MIA search continue for as long as it takes. Uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran, and so I know that there were guys that uh, that we left over there. Um, I think we, you know, as, as others have said, you know, one thing that the military owes everybody is a, a free ride home. We fully understand we can't bring everyone back. R the real satisfaction is, I, I look at those families and think if it, if that was my wife, if that was my children that didn't know what happened to dad. That someone would owe them some answers. And I would want somebody to try to give those answers to my family. There he is. Two point one million U.S. troops fought in Southeast Asia. The fifty-eight thousand who died there are memorialized in stone. And these many years later, feelings about the war still run deep at the Vietnam Wall in Washington, D.C. When I was in Vietnam, and to this day I still don't see a reason for us being there. I feel bad about the Vietnam War and I feel awful sorry for these families. 
you look at the Korean War, something was accomplished. The other wars, something was accomplished. Vietnam accomplished nothing. And that's the shame of it. So it's a good reminder. Let's not do it again. Across the Potomac, Pentagon leaders are also talking about Vietnam, modern-day Vietnam, and the Joint Task Force's ongoing efforts to find the wars missing. Army Secretary Louis Caldera supports the cause 100%. And it is a signal that we have not uh, forgotten uh, their courage, their contribution, uh, their willingness to go in harm's way for our country. The West Point graduate vows the work will continue, at least for the foreseeable future. But I think uh, that uh, what we are committed to do is to work exhaustively as possible on all the leads that exist to account for as many of our missing in action as is humanly possible. <laughs> to Mark. Mark, M-A-R-K. Cooster, K-U. The MIA effort does have its critics. Author Frederick Downs was severely wounded in 68 while serving as an Army platoon leader in Vietnam. He says at some point the searching needs to stop so the country can put the war to rest once and for all. Are we going to uh, search out the remains of every single soldier, sailor, and airman? And what about those that we will never be able to recover? Um, but that's uh, the pragmatic part of me. Uh, I certainly, if lost one of my children in war, I'd certainly want the remains back. Others at a Vietnam Veterans of America gathering in Williamsburg said the opposite, that if anything, the recovery effort should be stepped up. And it's all just BS. We left people there. We knew we left people there. And it's a tremendous sin against our society that we would do that. Yes, it is very, very important that we put, put some closure to those things, for the, especially for those people, but all of us need to say, gee, you know, when is this thing going to end? Some of the mothers and fathers that we talk to that are getting older know that they don't have much time to live and they would like to have their son's remains come back so they could bury him properly. And yes, they, it's, it's real important to these people. George Coker has a unique perspective. The former A-6 bombardier navigator was a prisoner of war for nearly six and a half years after being shot down in 66. He was just 23. Publicly, I wasn't known to be alive until late 69 when they released the first POW list out of North Vietnam. So for three years, I was dead to the world uh, or missing in action. Called in John McCain's book, A Legendary Resister, Coker was savagely beaten after trying to escape and for refusing to confess to war crimes. On the current MIA recovery effort, Coker has mixed feelings. I, I would just feel really sorry for somebody who's been doing that now for 25 or 30 years. Uh, for their sake, I wish they could close the book, and I know if I had, it had been my case and I was leaving behind, you know, a mother, father, wife, kids, I'd hope to God that they would have got on with their life a long time ago. Still, the Virginia Beach resident says the program has real value and should go on. He's just not sure how long. Yeah, let's try to bring it to a closure, and I'm sure that would help. There's no doubt in my mind that would help. I think we ought to give it our best shot, but I think the time is coming when it's, you're going to have to finally say it's done. I'm not sure when that's going to be. I wish I had an easy answer, and I don't. And 12,000 miles away, the recovery effort goes on. More than a quarter century now after the war's end, and the search for answers continues. Joint Task Force Full Accounting vows to keep looking, keep hunting for the truth until every American missing from the Vietnam War is accounted for one way or the other. I'm Mike Gooding. Thanks for watching us.